All ye beneath life's crushing load, whose forms are bending low, who toil along the climbing way with painful steps and slow, look now, for glad and golden hours come swiftly on the wing. O oh, rest beside the weary road and hear the angels sing. My friends, you beautiful people of God, welcome to worship today. Here at the culmination of long, exhausting months, here in that moment between Emmanuel's arrival and the dawning of a new year, welcome to worship. Your conference staff has prayerfully discerned and created this time of worship for you. And you are gathered today with your siblings across our conference, our country, and our globe, gathered together in praise and in prayer. Welcome to worship. O oh, rest beside the weary road and hear the angels sing, for our eyes have seen God's glory. Christ is born to us, the long-awaited gift. Welcome. based on Psalm 148. Praise the Lord, you creatures of the ocean depths, fire and hail, snow and storm, wind and weather that obey God's command, mountains and all cedars, wild animals and all livestock, reptiles and birds, rulers of all the earth and all people. Let us all praise the name of the Lord. For God's name is good, and great is God's blessing. God's glory towers over all the earth and the heavens. For hark, the herald angels sing, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Come, let us worship our God. Today, it's tradition to light the white candle, the candle in the center of our wreath, the candle that reminds us of the Christ child, the child born in Bethlehem so long ago. So today we light the Christ candle and we celebrate the birth of Jesus with the beautiful words from the traditional hymn of Puerto Rico, Pastoris Abelen. O holy heavenly child, the shepherds seek your blessing while singing happy songs, our hope and joy confessing. We run, we fly to greet the glorious child. With thankful hearts, we offer our best to Jesus. 
at the manger we'll rest. Hurry, hurry, hurry and see, hurry and see the child born of Mary. Let's go and see Emmanuel. Praise the Lord from heaven. Praise God on the heights. Praise God, all you who are his messengers. Sun and moon, praise God. All you bright stars, praise God. You highest heaven, praise God. Do the same, you waters that are above the sky. Let all these praise the Lord's name because God gave the command and they were created. God set them in place always and forever. God made a law that will not be broken. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters, and all you ocean depths. Do the same, fire and hail, snow and smoke, stormy winds that does what God says. Do the same, you mountains. Every single hill, fruit tree, and every single cedar. Do the same, you animals, wild or tame. You creatures that creep along and you birds that fly. Do the same, you kings of the earth and every single person, you princes of every single ruler on earth. Do the same, you young men, young women too, you who are old together with you who are young. Let all of these praise the Lord's name because only God's name is high over all. Only God's majesty is over the earth and heaven. God raised the strength of his people, the praise of all his faithful ones. That's the Israelites, the people who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God of creation who spoke light into the world, we thank you for giving us the gift of Jesus Christ, a baby born as we are all born, defenseless, dependent, reminding us that we are all still dependent upon you. God of hope, remind us in this time of illness and fear that we have nothing to fear for you are with us. God of joy, enable us to open our hearts to the joy and laughter of little children. God of peace, settle your Holy Spirit upon us, that we might know the peace that surpasses all understanding. And God of love, be with us now as we sing your praise. I'm Michael Seba. One of my favorite Christmas memories happened about 30 years ago. My family and I were visiting a museum in Montreal and we saw an exhibit of nativity scenes from all over the world. It was called Noel pour le monde, Christmas for the world. And as we walked through and looked at each of these nativity scenes, each one crafted by an artisan in their own country. It was remarkable how in every culture and every place, the setting of the nativity scene reflected what was happening locally, how people were dressed, what people looked like, what the housing looked like, what people were doing around them. My favorite of the nativity scenes was one from Ethiopia, 
And it was a massive scene of the life of an entire village. There were people working out in the fields and others were herding animals. Others were standing around fires, cooking or washing. Children were playing. Some people were sitting and telling stories with one another. It was hard to find the nativity scene, but eventually looking hard, I was able to see it. It was off in a very small corner of the village, a small house with Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus, a few shepherds, a few magi, just totally surrounded by all of the life that was around them and the everyday activities people were doing. The message of this exhibit was very, very clear that Christ is born in our neighborhood. Christ comes to us where we are. And the people who participate in the drama of Jesus' birth are people just like you and me, who are like us in what they do and how they dress and how they live. Christ is born in our neighborhood. I tried to imagine what it would be like for um, Christ to be born in the United States in 2020. And a few things became very clear to me. The first is that Mary and Joseph would likely have found room at the inn, since hotel occupancy rates are at about 25% right now. But they would have had to quarantine for 14 days if they had gotten a room. If Mary and Joseph had chosen to have the baby in a hospital, Mary would have gone in alone, and Joseph would most likely have seen the, the baby for the first time on a screen, on his iPad or his phone. The shepherds are essential workers. They would arrive dressed in face shields and PPE. They're essential because they provide food and clothing for people. They could show up in person, but they would have to maintain their social distance. The Magi would zoom in from their individual palaces, separated even in their own country, and the gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh would most likely arrive by Amazon or UPS trucks. And my two favorite characters in the Christmas story, the ancient prophets, Anna and Simeon would most likely deliver their prophecies via Facebook or some other social media application. But still, Christ is born in our time and in our neighborhood, in our country and in our world, facing all of the challenges that we face today. Jesus was not born in a perfect world, or even a very good one. Political violence, war, ethnic conflict, racism, economic inequality, despair, lack of meaning of life, substance abuse, all of these things were present in the first century. And some families had much, much more than they needed, while others lacked even the basic necessities of life. And still, Jesus is born in our neighborhood. This Christmas is going to be different for all of us. Um, Diane, my wife, and I have celebrated 43 Christmases together. And some of those years, it, would it was just the two of us. Other years, it was lots and lots of people. We have celebrated Christmases with our grandparents and our parents, all of whom now have gone on to the next life. We have celebrated Christmases with our children and our grandchildren, friends from near and far away, and people who we just happened to spend Christmas with for that one year for some reason or another. And this year, 
for the first time in a long time, it will be just the two of us together for Christmas. But it will still be Christmas because Christ will still be born in our lives. And we can be grateful for that. The prophet Simeon in Luke's gospel says that he is grateful for he has seen God's salvation. And we have seen that salvation too, because we know that God's love for us is so great that no limitations of time and space or pandemic or any other evil is enough to erase God's love for us. So Merry Christmas from the Southern New England Conference, from all of its staff and its churches, its associations, its board of directors and its members, to all of you. And may 2021 be a blessed year for all of us. Will you be praying when the baby boy appears?